of the candidates will have one minute um, to say why they're running for this role and, and what they will do if they get the role. And then there will be a, a chance for questions and answers after that. So we're going to kick off with uh, VP Wellbeing. So can I welcome to stage our candidates for VP Wellbeing. Woo! Um, I'm Smith, I'm your current Vice President of Wellbeing. Um, I spent the last year implementing zero tolerance policies against bullying and harassment, um, fighting against sexism on and off campuses. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, that's last year. That's last year. Next year. Um, I'm currently writing a housing strategy. Um, what this is is a document that will lead the way the student union works next year in fighting against the housing issues across all campuses. Um, it's something that's quite evident in Brighton, but it's evident everywhere really, and I think it's an uh, area where we can, as a student union, combine our forces and actually make a big difference. Um, on top of that, I want to make sure that all the services across all campuses are fair. Um, I know that in Brighton we've got drop-ins for sexual health, drugs, we've got a lot more academic affairs, drop-ins and things like that, um, and they should be extended to all of our campuses. So I'll also be working on that, um, and make sure that Wellbeing Week becomes a legacy. Thank you very much, Liz. Woo! I've only got one question handed forward. Any questions for VP Wellbeing, please write them down. You had loads of questions last week, so... Can we have some pens, Yes? I want to talk about Okay, so question number one. VP Wellbeing. How are you going to bring liberation campaigns and support to Hastings? Okay, this is something that... I myself find it not annoying, but a bit of an irritant in that the liberation side, the wellbeing zone has been ever so active this year, and I've been ever so fortunate in having really good part-time liberation reps. Um, the issue with that is that all of my part-time liberation reps this year have been based in Brighton. Um, so Brighton's really, really good, but Eastbourne and Hastings not so much. Um, I think one way to c tackle it would be to have a disability officer that's campus-based rather than whole university-based. Um, that means that we have, well, not just disability, but all liberations. That means that we have liberation officers on every campus, um, so all campuses are covered. But it also means that it's not just one student trying to cover all campuses, because um, they have courses to do. Thank you very much. Woo! Next question. <laughs> Is there a way to get all letting agents to take on the ideals of the university standard? Ooh, good question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we're, I've currently been working with Harry Hillary from the accommodation within the university. Um, we've created a code of standards um, which we're going to get all letting agents, state agents and landlords to sign up to. Uh, what that would mean if they sign up to our code of standards, we would then promote them to our students as a good estate agent. They would then get more bookings and it makes them more wanting to sign up um, and follow what we feel they should be doing. Thank you very much, Chris. Woo! Next question. How best can the SU stop putting sections of students into pigeonholes and deal with bullying and harassment? How best bullying and harassment How best can the SU stop putting sections of students into pigeonholes and deal with bullying and harassment? So I guess deal with bullying and harassment without putting students into pigeonholes. I'm not sure if I get the question, but I'll turn the rest. Um, by pi pigeonholes, I guess you mean liberation groups. Um, I wouldn't try to stop putting students into such pigeonholes, um, up until the point where all students are actually on an equal footing. Um, they're there for a reason, they're there, it's important, it's not about equality, it's about justice. The students that fit into those pigeonholes are down here compared to most of our students, and it's about putting them all on the same level. Liberation groups for them is a form of community, it's a form of identifying themselves, and I don't think we should stop the pigeonholing at all. Um, in regards to bullying and harassment, it's one thing that I've really pushed this year. Um, up until my year in office, believe it or not, the Student Union had no policy about bullying and harassment. We just didn't have any view on it. Um, that got passed at Union Council this year, um, and it states that we do have a strict policy against it, and that's all forms of bullying harassment on campus and at student union events such as this. Um, how to deal with that, obviously it does go down to being a university issue, but it's also a student union issue. Uh, we shouldn't be, every bullying harassment 
incident that we experience, we shouldn't just be pushing that to the university. We are a community, we're a student body, and we should promote being nice to each other and looking after each other. Um, we are in the process of putting a reporting system in so that students can report any incidents that they experience to us, which will then go on to the university. Um, and that's important, especially if the bullying and harassment is coming from someone that works at the university, you're not then going to want to report that person to themselves. Um, so we act as the mediation between students and the university. Thank you very much, Sue. Well done. Are there any more questions for Vice President Wellbeing? No? A massive round of applause for Fliss there. <laughs> okay, next up we have our campaigns officers. And um, so I'd like to welcome to the stage Martin Brown because he's uh, the only one that's here. Woo! one minute. Sure. Tell us uh, what you want to do. Okay, I'm Martin. I'm running for Dis Disability Campaigns Officer this year. I hope, uh, we realise that about 13% of students within the university have a disability of some sort, be it mental, or physical or emotional, and it's about getting that equality and raising awareness. I'd like to put in a place of a range of different campaigns, not just off campus, but on campus as well, such as an alternate range of freshers events as the idea currently going around of the fringe festival of a different range of freshers events such as a um, non-drinking parties within the student union tours around brighton things like that just to familiarize students especially with disabilities to the brighton area and just things like that really and to be able to provide talking forums for students to if they've got an issue to go and speak to someone, be it on a student, student level or a student to staff, just to feel more comfortable and integrated in the university community and just be more equal and hopefully push towards that and raise awareness of students with disabilities. Well, thank you very much, Martin. Well done. Do you have any questions for our disability officer? Thank you very much. Question number one, Martin. What would you do to ensure students from Hastings feel heard within the disabled student community? Now, as many people know, especially from Hastings, it is quite far out from the other campuses, especially in Brighton. I'd like to put in place an interactive form of communication with me, so be it by email, Facebook, or an online forum, so they can communicate with me. If necessary, I can come down to speak to you face to face, but that's that first point of contact that isn't currently always in place. And just to make it aware, even if I'm not physically in presence, that I am there virtually, and that you can still pro provide me with ideas, and just give me further input to what you'd like to see in the university. Thank you very much, Margaret. <laughs> Have you got any more questions? One for Mr. Mark Curry. Um, Martin, how has the student union impacted on you during your time so far at the University of Brighton? I think the biggest thing it's given me is confidence. That to be able to stand up here and do this tonight is which is something I wouldn't have been able to do at the start. And it's just been able to give me that support to really get going and hopefully I can take it further. Woo! And our last, last question for Martin is, what examples of events do you plan on, ho on having? I'd like to hold a range of events. We've a lot of the promotions that go around halls and other parts of the campus, mainly about drinking within Brighton Town and things like that such as the um, Oceana Wednesdays that happen in Brighton and things like that. I'd like to be able to provide an alternative beat within the student union or just to be able to promote the societies a lot more. So things like um, a lot of people with disabilities might not want to go to the clubs with the loud music and all the drinking. So to be able to have maybe a gathering within the student union bars, so the stand-up nights, the open mic nights, things like that, where they can still go and socialise and they're not excluded to their houses or wherever, but to be able to go out, but maybe in a slightly more controlled environment, and just to be able to still be part of the university community, but in different ways. Thank you, Martin. A huge round of applause for Martin. <laughs> I feel like we're racing through this tonight. <laughs> okay, so next up we have the VP Academic Affairs, so I'd like to welcome to the stage all the candidates running for VP Academic Affairs. <laughs> Any questions, jot them down and pass them forward. So we'll each have one minute to give a, uh, a short speech and then we'll have questions. Who wants to go first? 
Hello, I'm Margie. I'm the current VP Academic Affairs at Brighton Students' Union and I'm re-running for re-election. And the reason why I'm re-running is because I really enjoyed this year and I think I managed to achieve a lot of good things and I want to continue that. So basically I'm not finished with what I've started. So for instance, uh, I have pushed the university into the online submission and right now I'm trying to push for online feedback and not just online feedback but quality feedback as well. Uh, we've organized the first course rep conference, so one of the main things I want to do is to bring school reps and course reps together so that we can actually hear from them what are the issues on their campus, on their course, school, etc. Uh, so I think that's one of the main things that I'll try to achieve this year, actually listen to school reps and course reps and work on the issues that matter to them. Uh, I'll also try to keep uh, extending the library hours, I mean, not me, but work with the university, obviously, uh, and the studio hours for students that study art courses, design, etc. And uh, really, the reason why I want to basically continue is... Oh, you're back, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Should have brought some sunglasses. I can't see anything. Um, Okay, so since the last one of these that I came to, I took on board what was said. Um, and I've kind of gone away from that and reflected on that. And I spent the last sort of week or two listening to students rather than talking to students. Um, and I kind, of, I kind of went into this. I've had a really positive experience at Brighton. And I'm actually a little bit disappointed by some of the feedback that I've been getting from students about the university, about the union as well. Um, so I think really that's something that I want to seriously address. Um, I'm quite shocked by some of what I've heard as well. Um, so rather than giving you a speech, that's, that's just kind of where I'm coming from at the moment. Thank you very much, Dan. All right, so we've got two questions. Who would like to go first? Okay, scissors. Yes. Okay. So the question is, how important is fighting against the student loan book sell-off and why? Well, I think that's a really important issue and at the Students' Union we have actually been trying to fight this. So we've been around campuses, we have some posters around, we've been informing students about it because students don't actually really know about it and I think it's really important because it's not going to just affect students that already graduated but in the future it can actually affect people that are going to be graduating soon. So basically people are already paying £9,000 fees and if the interest on their loan is increased that's not going to be great for them. So I think it's really important for students to be aware and to be empowered to act on this. So if that means signing petitions or sending letters to MPs or like to people in the government and I think students should be pushed to do that because it's something that they shouldn't just look at it as something that's going to affect people that have already graduated but it's going to affect themselves as well. Thank you Maggie. what she said. Um, I've been talking to students about this as well quite a lot and um, less than 5% of the people that I've spoken to have any idea what's going on. Um, it's, it's just disgraceful. It's an insult to students, it's an insult to taxpayers um, and I think in the coming 12 months the union has got to be seriously active, like militantly active, um, about campaigning, awareness, um, you know, it, I think we need to be active in the community, we also need to be seen to be active with other universities in campaigning to stop this. Um, I'm quite surprised by the level of ignorance about the issue, considering it's as serious as it is. So, for me, local issues aside, that would be a top priority, absolute top priority. Thank you very much. Woo. Okay, next question, and we'll have Dan go first this time. Um, how do you plan on making sure Hastings students are getting the most out of their courses? It's a good question. Um, that's one of, I think that's one of the things that's, that's concerned me, is this, this kind of apparent disconnect between the Brighton-based campuses and Hastings. And also, not just Hastings, but also partner colleges. Um, don't seem to be as linked in to the university and the union as they probably should be um, or at least they don't feel like they are so 
whatever the union is doing is not working, something's kind of missing or being lost in translation, what would I do about it? Um, I'm not in an informed inside position to know what's currently in place to do something about it, but certainly by being more visible and more proactive um, within the partner colleges, within Hastings campus, I think is an absolute must for whoever does this job next year, whether it's me or Maggie or Kudra. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, as he said, it's like a true challenge for us. As you know, like we have Hastings Campus, he's born as well. So in my role this year, I have, I've constantly dragged into a lot of university meetings where I'm actually asked to represent the student views. So essentially, even though I'm not in Hastings, sitting there and representing the student views, doesn't mean that I'm not representing Hastings. It doesn't mean that I'm representing all students and their views. And the way in which we get informed about what students want is by obviously talking to them through our different campaigns that we have throughout the year. But as well, there are a lot of surveys, like the National Student Survey, our own Keepstop survey. So the issues that come up are constantly the same, and it's really important to uh, bring that out to the university so they can act on it. Uh, but sitting on meetings is obviously not enough, because you need to make yourself known to the students, as Dan said. So, for instance, attending the course rep trainings in the beginning of the year, I think it's essential because making yourself known to the course reps is uh, really important because uh, you need to make them feel that they can come to you and talk to you for anything and also empowering the school reps to act together with the course rep. Thank you, Maggie. Woo! Have we got any more questions for the candidates for... Oh, they're working on one. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay guys, so this one time we'll have Maggie first. What is the one key academic challenge students face in the next 12 months and how would you address it? Well, as I said, the university adopted an online submission policy and the main thing, the main issue that uh, students are facing at the moment that is actually not consistent, so they're getting uh, a variety of experiences, which is not, that's not meant to be the case. And one of the things I think that should be done about it is actually to raise awareness around it rather than just uh, telling staff that's how we should do it. Students should be told that that should be the case and if it's not, then they should get in touch. And as well, that kind of links to the uh, online feedbacks for which I talked about. So I think the main issue that students face is uh, they're not getting a good enough feedback. So I think that's the other thing that must be acted upon. Um, I think nationally, the student loan book sell-off for me is probably a pretty massive deal. Um, and I've already kind of said what my views are on that. Locally, that's a student-led issue, really. I mean, I'd, if I was doing the job, if I was taking over from Maggie, I'd have the benefit of her, her year's worth of knowledge and experience to draw on before I could really answer that question. I don't know that I'm best placed to answer that right now, actually. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Do we have any last questions for the candidates running for Vice President activities? Oh. <laughs> Academic affairs. <laughs> no? Any from the floor? <laughs> no, alright, can I have a huge round of applause for the candidates? Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Okay, and now can I welcome to the stage all the candidates running for VP, Campus and Communications. <laughs> and any questions that you may have, pass them forward please. Okay, so you'll both have one minute to tell us uh, why you want to be elected and what you'll do next year. Good evening everyone. Uh, I apologise I'm not singing tonight for those that were there last week. I'm not singing. Uh, so one minute, Jesus. Hastings, Hastings, Hastings. It's a difficult campus, let's not beat around the bush. And in my year in office I've seen the difficulties that it is uh, being a Hastings student. And um, well, I'm not a Hastings student, but having to speak to Hastings students. One of the first things I wanted to do was actually speak to you guys as you go out there and have some face-to-face -face contact. Um, now, I worked alongside with our, we've got a community organiser herself, and Bruno, our campus administrator, did a uh, 
uh, pizza party at the Halls of Residence, which unfortunately I couldn't attend, it was my idea, but it was just all about getting some ideas out there um, about what we could do at the Hastings campus. Um, so we heard about the difficulties and we took it forward. So one of the big things is that was mentioned in Anthony's speech was travel. Um, uh, last week we got a, uh, the Unizone ticket extended out to Eastbourne, but I'm not going to stop on that campaign until we get it out to Hastings. Because it's only fair... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a tangent! Sorry. Woo! I apologise, I've had a horrendous cough. Um, good? Okay, um, I've been a student for three years now and I think I've pretty much um, done everything. I lived in halls of residence, I made friends, um, I got a job at the student union, I joined societies and I generally got involved. Um, and that's my main goal for, for students is to get them involved. I think that uni is a once in a lifetime opportunity um, and it's there to be made memorable and that's what I want to do for students. I, wanna, um, I, want, to, oh, I want to increase student participation and engagement in all sectors. I want to push the Media Federation so that it's, a it's an effective communication tool for students. Um, and I want to make sure that all halls of res residents are comfortable as well. But this isn't just about what I want, it's about what the students want as well. Um, and I think that I can be that bridge between student and student union. Um, I'm in an effort to engage students, I've also been vlogging my entire campaign. So if you search Vote Sophie C on the internet, you'll find a Facebook page full of my videos of all like the behind the scenes of running a campaign. Okay, Thank you very much. Woo! Okay, so we've got loads of lovely questions for our two candidates. Um, and we'll kick off and we'll have Paul first. How would you go about making university spaces more accessible? Uh, how would I go about that? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I, I try and have uh, different, different students have their different wants and needs. Um, and different types of students uh, expect different things from different spaces. So I try and allocate spaces for the different wants and needs. Uh, for example, if students want a space to sort of chill out and do a bit of sport, try and make that accessible and, and so forth. I think that's a difficult question, um, because if it's in terms of Hastings, I'm not massive on the spaces that are available in Hastings um, and just to what their improvements may be. I know that I can compare it to my campus, I studied at Falmer, it's also quite a small forgotten campus um, and we're in the middle of renovating a, a, a space. I think that um, our student cooperative that we started, um, it's helped in Eastbourne for B-Scoop and Morscombe have done it and so we've built ours and so if it needs be Hastings to have one to find out what the students need from their campus um, and what spaces that are available and what needs improving. Thank you very much Sophie. Woo. Next question and we'll have Sophie first please. What would you do to ensure student voice is heard on the Hastings campus? Um, I think a big thing that is important within this role is um, working with part-time officers, um, working with Hastings campus rep, and working with course reps, because without hearing the voices of the students, I don't know, I know what I want, I know what I want as a student, um, but I don't know what you guys want. Um, another president said about question times being run throughout the year, and I do think that there needs to be something Preferably less informal, um, that, um, that will help for um, like sabbatical officers to actually get what the students need so that we can then voice them, because I think us voicing them isn't the issue, I think it's getting the information from the students and engaging with students, that is the main priority. Thank you very much. Uh, two parts, two parts to, the answer, uh, to the answer the question. The first part is... Uh, Sophie's absolutely right, is speaking to the course reps, the campus reps. Hastings was really fortunate this year, it was the only campus to have an entertainment rep and, an, uh, and a campus rep. Um, and it's all about utilising those relationships and making sure that they're um, continued on a year to year basis. And for me, it's all about the face to face communication. Uh, there's no point us standing off office guessing what, or what are they wanting in Hastings in a minute. It's just going out there, speaking to them, hosting informal. Um, parties or whatever it may be, and actually speaking to the students. Thank you very much, Paul. 
Next question. And we'll have Paul first. How will you, communi how will you communicate effectively with students in halls? Uh, students in halls, uh, for the majority, love a get-together. Um, the pizza party that we had just before Christmas uh, with the campus administrator and the community organiser, um, they just got a load of pizza in, got a load of drinks and said, guys, come on down and we'll have a good chat. And it worked really effectively. Um, all the different kinds of students, those that weren't really mixing in, they came down, they shared their ideas, and I think that works really well. So I'd make sure that would be more of a regular thing. Thank you very much, Paul. Woo. Um, I lived in halls, and I lived in Varley Park. For those of you who don't know, it's hey. For those of you who don't know, it's um, it's it's not campus based, so it's in between Falmer and Morecambe campuses in Brighton. Um, so it, it wasn't um, very central to a specific place. But I didn't know what was happening at other halls of residence, and I think it'd be interesting for Hastings students to find out what's happening in Eastbourne and what's happening on different halls of residence. Um, in Brighton so they can see what they have available, what, what their needs are, like what needs um, changing. I think that maybe um, getting get-togethers between different halls groups will be um, an interesting way of engaging with students and finding what they actually need and what they didn't realise that they needed. Thank you very much, thank you. Woo! Fantastic. <coughs> Next up we'll have Sadie first. <coughs> Okay. Why doesn't Hastings have an SU bar? <laughs> I don't know. Fa apparently, Falmer didn't have an SU bar. I, I said apparently. I've, I've been there for three years. For two years, it didn't have one. It still, it technically has one now. It sells alcohol. It's not middle. It's not central for a place to go. It's still being worked on. If that's something that Hastings needs then it should be something that the next team of sabbat sabbatical officers enforces because we didn't think we needed it at Falmer and um, surveys showed that that's what students wanted and if it's, if it's a case of it's something that the students need and they want then we should try and enforce it. I see no other way in just trying to make that happen if that's a thing that needs to happen. Thank you very much Sophie. Hastings is a developing campus. 20 years ago, this campus wasn't here, so it's continued developing. Um, space is limited. Uh, as, as it is on most of our campuses, um, space is limited here, so we can't just have a bar willy-nilly. Uh, obviously, we've got the campus office. That's not big enough. We need more of a physical SU space, um, but it's not going to happen overnight. Um, obviously, the, the building over at Lac Lacuna Place, that's developing. That is something that the university and the SU could take forward as a proposition. But I can't say to you, I'll oh, bring you a bar. I'm not going to promise that because, you know, space, it's not easy to come by. Somewhere, especially in a town centre. Um, but yeah, it's something that, you know, the SU continue to fight for. It's not something that we think, ah, oh, Hastings doesn't need it. Because we think every campus needs it. And so it's something that we'll continue fighting for. But it's, it's a space thing at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Paul. Woo! If you've got any more questions for VP Campus Com, please pass them forward. Wonderful. <coughs> Thank you very much. All right, so next question, and we'll have Paul first. How will you include Hastings in events and conferences? <coughs> conferences. Conferences. Like Brighton Students Conference? Oh, like Brighton Students Conference. Conference. Okay. <laughs> How long can you hate this? Um, okay, so I, I try and make uh, travel more accessible. Obviously, I spoke about the Unizone ticket, and I think if it was at, extended out to Hastings, that would make sort of Eastbourne and Brighton based uh, events and conferences more appealing for students. Now, obviously, Hastings students can say, well, we don't want to travel, we want to hear it here, here at Hastings, and I completely agree with that. Um, Myself and Vice President Wellbeing Fliss are currently uh, designing a festival programme for the students that don't want to go out and get drunk. And we're designing it, uh, catering for each, ca each campus. So all Hastings will have its own set of events for those students that don't want to go, go out drinking, um, etc. Um, but yeah, it's all about asking the students what events and conferences. I, I don't really know about these conferences that you mentioned the question, but even still, it's all about finding out what you want on the Hastings campus and not saying, oh yeah, come over to Brighton, it's there. It's all about making it happen here. 
Thank you very much, Paul. I think obviously travel and uh, space is a big thing. Um, I don't want Hastings to feel left out. We were lucky enough to have the Brighton Students Conference and the Course Rep Conference up at Falmouth this year, and I attended both of them. But if they were on a different campus, I would have liked um, for the university or the SU to have to supplied some kind of um, travel expense, be it coach or uh, expense for tickets. Um, but that's not to say that we can't look into having conferences in um, different places as well. Um, yeah, I think it's imp I think it's important that um, when it comes to conferences and things that um, people sign up before they go because a lot of events, including ones like today, we don't know how many we don't know what the turnout's going to be like. We don't know how many people are going to be there, and if it's something that like travel that needs catering for, um, a number would help. Thank you very much, Sophie. Thank you. So uh, this is our last question for VP uh, Campus Communications, <coughs> and we will have Sophie first. Halls and students in Halls and Hastings are only a small fraction of the students. How will you get together with the students that live in other university accommodations? Okay, um, so like I said, interacting with others is um, important and I think, I think it shouldn't be a case that we should be like, oh, get the train over to Brighton, that's, that's perfect. I think it is a case of holding separate events in each campus and, and, and convincing students to go and meet each other. Um, I think, like I want to do, I would like to enforce this during freshers uh, specifically because um, I now have friends on other campuses um, that I can go and visit, but I wouldn't have had that in my first year because I didn't know anything about societies. Um, I knew that you get, uh, you get a lot of sports um, during um, Freshers' Fair and you get a lot of nightclubs, specifically in Brighton. But I think one thing that is important is um, having a way of uh, integrating halls on different campuses so that you can get to meet other people because uh, although um, some of you may study different courses, I know that there's someone in this room that studies education and media and I study English language and media. We have something in common. We met in a society and now I have a friend on this campus. Sorry, could you repeat your question? Just saying, I don't know why. Question was, students in, students in halls in Hastings is only a small fraction of the students. How will you get together with the students that live in other university accommodation? Okay, so one of the things I'm doing uh, to help build the communities in halls is uh, I've organised with Sport Bright in the first ever inter-halls championships where all the halls um, go head to head in a sort of mini sports weekend. There'll be uh, touch rugby, football, um, what else we got? We got table tennis and that's just one of the ways that I'm trying to get people out of their accommodation and mixing with one another. Um, but it's not just for halls, obviously the students that in their first year, they don't get into halls and we obviously, we spend a lot of time trying to focus on the students that are, are in halls, there are students in private accommodation. Um, and it's all about appealing to them because all, like I said earlier, students have different needs and different wants, not everyone wants to go out on a Monday or Wednesday night and get absolutely hammered. It's all about appealing to those students that don't want to. Um, but it, you know, all year I've spent speaking to students asking what kind of events do you want and students say we'd like to sort of do day trips up to Blue Water or Thorpe Park or whatever, whatever it may be but it's all about actually speaking to you guys, you telling us what you want and we can try and facilitate that to try and bring you all together as a bigger community. Thank you very much. Woo! Can get a huge round of applause for our two candidates running for uh, the Black and Rock. Woo! Right, well, hi, my name's Alex. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to a campus rep because for the last, what, five months, I haven't seen our current one. So I thought someone should step up, so I thought I'd go for it. Uh, basically, I hope you've all read my manifesto. It's not too boring. Um, but yeah, um, I've just gone blank. I really don't do public speaking. So, uh, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> Uh, Tell us about yourself. No, me, I'm Ginger. Yay! Uh, <laughs> I think that's the secret answer. Uh, yeah, I'm allergic to alcohol. Uh, that's a good one. Um, and I spend a lot of time in uni. Oh, I, I, 
<laughs> Let's wait till later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Rachel. I'm running for Heathrow and Dent. Um, obviously, second year, so I have been that student that complains about we get forgotten, we don't have events here, nightlife in Hastings sucks, so basically I want to just work on that, get involved with the local businesses, see what we can do. Um, I want it to be more student-led activities, so I maybe once a month we have a themed night, you guys vote which theme it is, you know, get you guys involved, be someone that you can come to and say, we want this event, can you help us organise it? And that's pretty much it. Woo! Okay, so we've got quite a few questions for um, entertainment officer, but we've only got one for campus rep, so I might come in from over a little bit if that's okay. First one, um, we will have Alex first. Okay. Tell us a joke. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Why did the hedgehog cross the road? No, why? To see his flatmate. <laughs> um, so I don't do jokes, but my housemate, who possibly wrote this question, is doing a comedy thing on Thursday, so he can come up and tell my joke if he wants. <laughs> 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 Rachel. You're welcome. Thanks for that. <laughs> it was just an in for a bit of stand up, wasn't it? <laughs> just a bit of promotion. Alright, how are you doing? Yeah, good. <laughs> I, uh, I might do a five minute set now. <laughs> I, uh, I had a wee in a lift the other day. It was wrong on so many levels. <laughs> there you are. One liner. <laughs> Constantly, there's so much going on here, and I feel like there needs to be a focus on getting involved with the community more than just oh, West Exit, it's a Thursday night. So, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I don't like going out clubbing, I can't drink, as I said earlier. Uh, yeah, so basically, I would work with the uh, events officer, uh, the VP events, and pretty much anyone else, most of the, all the spat of the team, with the um, refreshes program that they're doing for Fresh of All. Uh, because to me that sounds absolutely amazing. Because it's not centred around going out clubbing of a night, because that really doesn't appeal to everyone. And I'd work probably all year round um, for regular-ish sort of events along the, those same lines. Thank you very much. Um, 
question for Alex. Okay. How will you work with the SABs to improve the Hastings campus environment? Uh, well, I... Well, space is limited, obviously. Uh, we don't actually have a lot of space, but I'd like to sort... Uh, do more activities in the student lounge in Priory, because at the moment, all I see using it are the more mature students who go in, have a coffee, sit down, have a good old chat. They're really hilarious. Go sit there and talk to them. I'd recommend that. Um, but yeah, we just create more sorts of uh, societies that actually go towards do stuff in the day. Because most societies are nighttime stuff. People have kids, people have jobs, and night is not always great for them. So I'd say more daytime societies, I think. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Generic. How would you improve the student nightlife in Hastings? You kind of already asked this. Yeah. Um, kind of mentioned in my manifesto a bit as well. We'll never actually bother to read that. <laughs> um, I think we're very limited in what can happen, like with venues and stuff and these things. But I think it needs to be more working with the local businesses, seeing what they can do for us as students. Like we're all a bit poor, especially right now, and. Um, I think maybe even just sorting out local like business deals and stuff for students. And it needs to just be working with what we've got. There's not anything <coughs> we can do to make it better. We can't suddenly have builders appearing and new venues being built for us. It just has to be working with what we've got. So, yeah. Do we have any more questions for our campus rep or entertainment officer? Could you pass it forward, please? Thank you very much. And I think I can address this question to both of you. So we will have Alex first. What's the main thing you want to do with Hastings in your year? Um, I think I, want, I, I generally want to include everyone. I mean, we have so many courses over at the college that no one, well, I say no one, not a lot of people actually know about. I've been talking to quite a few people, talking about how many they do know are over there. Um, it was the general consensus of everyone that there are a few craft stuff over there, artsy stuff over there. No one knew we had a PGC team over there. They're doing their course over there. They're part of the University of Brighton. And no one knew about them. Um, I actually attend their classes of, of the Thursday evening with them and they don't know what goes on over here at all. So I think I'd want to include everyone and as it does say in my manifesto, create a better student community, I think. Fantastic. Something that said how we are the forgotten campus, no one knows about us. So, keeping us as our own, not changing us because I think it's really nice the community that we have, but getting us more involved with the rest of the university. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good evening everyone, my name is Jeremy Gerd, I'm standing to be part-time student rep. Uh, at the moment there's 3,945 students who, who lack a voice, who lack any form of representation because there is no part-time student rep in place. At the heart of my proposals lies community. Community is very important to me. We're able to achieve things uh, together rather than just on our own. Uh, that said, I'd like to work in partnership with the Students' Union to create uh, part-time societies at each campus and in so doing uh, locate part-time community leaders at each campus. So. Um, each uh, part-time society has a rep that they can communicate to within their campus. I'd also like to hold quarterly part-time student forums at each campus, whereby I, I go to the ca each campus and uh, meet with the part-time students based there, listening to their ideas and concerns, and allowing me to take their ideas forward to the student union. And, and my third proposal, I recently applied to study uh, a language, an additional module, and I was quite shocked to find that as a part-time student I'd have to pay £1,500, whereas a full-time student wouldn't have to pay anything. 
Uh, this is wrong uh, and definitely needs changing. Um, if elected, I will stop. <laughs> How will you ensure that part-time students in Hastings are also taken care of? I think the, uh, the first thing would be to um, establish a, a part-time stall at um, the Freshers' Fairs, not just at Hastings, but at all the other campuses as well. And I, think, I really think the, uh, the, the part-time student forums would be extremely beneficial to part-time students at Hastings. I think uh, at the moment there are only around, um, I think it's 80 or so, uh, actually, yeah, it's 80 or so part-time students here. So it is a very small community. But their views and needs still need to be heard. And I think these quarterly uh, part-time student forums, uh, outreach almost, would allow the integration into the union itself. Thank you very much. Woo! Uh, next question. What are the main challenges part-time students face and what do you plan on doing to tackle this? So the main challenges part-time students face are Childcare commitments, um, a lot of students, part-time students as well, work full-time hours outside of their studies. Um, and that's just f from my own perspective, not childcare by the way, I'm, I'm not a dad, um, yet. Um, but talking to part-time students, I'm yet to meet one actually, um, will allow me to establish what their needs are, because they all vary, but the two really are juggling study with full-time or part-time work and childcare commitments. And then currently, they're, they're not, it's being overlooked at the moment. Thanks. Thank you very much. Woo! Do you have any more questions for our part time student rep? No? Can I get a huge round of applause there for Jeremy? Woo! Thank you very much. Now we're going to move on to uh, Chair of Union Council, Terry. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stage, Terry, who's running for Chair of Union Council. Uh, so you have one minute to tell us uh, why you want to do it and what you're going to do. Um, the role of chair of the Union Council is to uh, meet with the um, university representatives, the um, directors, and to um, have a voice for the students of uh, each campus and um, each different need. And um, I think my interests, my history, uh, provide um, excellent attributes for this role, um, such as. Um, my involvement politically and my involvement with uh, charities previously, such as um, an award-winning charity in my um, city that I lived in before, which is Manchester, um, which I helped establish as a young person and um, from a young person's perspective. And having that sort of a background, I can um, represent us students um, and get the best um, for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we do have one question for you. Name the biggest thing we can do to change or improve Union Council. Um, better particip participation. I think um, it's the most important thing. I was speaking about this previously. Um, many students aren't... It's, it's the same politically like um, voting. They don't get involved. And so their voices aren't heard because they're not really relevant. I think that's the most important thing, getting students to uh, feel the need um, to participate, making it feel important and um, yeah, showing what can be done what once they get involved and have a voice in their team. I think that's what I'm Thank you very much. Um, and just kind of building on that answer, what would you do to encourage students to attend Union Council? Um, I think showing the benefits of uh, attending and showing the benefits that can be done when um, students get involved in uh, the SU. Um, I, think, I think showing, um, getting the sabbaticals there and showing the process of what they, they've done and pe people that work for the SU and how things can be improved slowly but surely um, by working, by um, le letting their voice be heard and um, I think this is, um, yeah. That's the best way of going. Fantastic! Okay, so um, this question, because actually I think it's quite apparent that a lot of our membership probably don't know what Union Council is. Yeah. So the question is, what is Union Council and how will you make students more aware? 
And then the Union Council is um, the it works alongside the board of the university and the trustees, and um, they make decisions about our, our university, and um, this is for every and each campus. And uh, what was the next question, sorry? And how you make more students aware of it. Okay, um, I think making more students aware of it, you'd go about that by um, the, the different um, methods of doing it, so, such as um, social media, such as face-to-face, uh, -face, um, yeah, um, conversing face to face. I think the best way of um, doing it is probably by making it relevant by um, showing people when when the council does something, has a meeting, letting people know and showing them what they've done for them and how they've um, represented them to make the changes they want. Fantastic! Thank you. Yeah, a huge round of applause for Terry. Uh, Terry